Okay, I'm sure you remember that for a long while you worked with order of operations and we called that BODMAS, gave us an order in which to do things. And once we uh, had learned about exponents, it became quite useful for us just to include exponents in this idea. And so we changed the name to BEDMAS. And what this tells us is that whenever we're faced with a calculation we need to do, we first need to deal with the brackets, then we need to deal with the exponents, then we need to deal with division or multiplication, and then we need to deal with addition or subtraction. Okay, the best way to check this is to look at some examples, and we're going to do some examples where you see negative numbers involved in the calculations. All right, here's our first one. 7 minus 3 times 5 plus 2. All right, so bed mass tells us we must first look for brackets. Well, there aren't any brackets. Then we need to look for exponents. Well, there aren't any exponents. After that, we look for divisional multiplication. Well, we can see quite clearly that we have a multiplication that we need to do. So, I find it useful just to underline it so I'm very clear on what I'm dealing with at every stage. So, let me do that multiplication. The 7, I don't touch. And then, I need to work out 3 times 5. Well, that gives me 15. And then the 2, I haven't touched yet. So I've done my next step. Okay, then I need to check what do I need to do next. Well, is there any more divisional multiplication to do? No. So now I can move on to addition, subtraction. Now addition and subtraction are at the same level. So all I've got left here is subtraction and addition. They're at the same level. There's nothing that tells me which of those two need to go first. And so what I do is I just move from left to right. So I say, all right, 7, subtract 15. While I'm at 7, I go 15 back. I know that I'm going to end up at negative 8. And then I'm going to have to add on 2. Negative 8 plus 2. I'm at negative 8 and I come two steps further up. I'll end up at negative 6 and there's my answer. All right, let's have a look at another example. Here we've got a calculation to do. The first thing that Bedmas tells us to look out for are brackets. So we have a calculation in brackets here. This is in brackets too, and it's really brackets to help you see what the exponent needs to deal with. So we can actually deal with both of these at the same time. So let's first deal with negative 4 plus 2. I'm at negative 4 and I need to walk up two steps along the number line, so I'll end up at negative 2. I haven't touched the times 3, right? All I've done is calculate that, and I'm going to calculate this as well. Okay, I'm going to calculate the negative 5 squared. Now remember, we've looked at this before, it's the whole negative 5 that is squared. In other words, it means we've got negative 5 multiplied by negative 5, Negative times negative gives me a positive, so I've got 25. And then I've got the times 2, which I still have to deal with. Okay, what does bed mass tell me to do next? I've dealt with my brackets, I've dealt with my exponents. Next step is division or multiplication. And I do have here, I've got a multiplication and another multiplication. So let me deal with each of those. Negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6. Put down that minus sign and I have to do 25 times 2 and that gives me 50. And now all I've got left to do is the subtraction. I'm at negative 6. I subtract or 50. In other words, I go 50 further down. I end up at negative 56. Okay, a last example to try, and I want you to try this one first. Press pause, try it in your homework books, and then we'll do it together. All right, so first step you had to deal with was this whole lot in brackets, which involved a whole lot of um, exponents. Remember, negative 3 squared like that, the way it's written here, 
It's just the 3 that is squared. That negative hasn't been included in a bracket to the squared, right? So it's just the 3 that is squared. So you will end up with negative 9. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. So you'll have negative 3 is the square root of negative 27. And the rest we haven't, we're not even going to bother with until we've sorted out that bracket. Okay, so you know from your work on addition and subtraction, this is negative 9. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting. Right, leave all the rest. Let's sort out that bracket first. Negative 9, subtract 3. You're going to end up at negative 12. And then divide 6. And let's just sort out this little thing here. Adding a negative, we know, is just exactly the same as subtracting. Okay. What do we need to do next? Well, we've got rid of all brackets and exponents, so the next step is to deal with division and multiplication. In other words, we have to, as our next step, go and deal with this division before we go on to the subtraction. Negative 12 divided by 6 is going to give you an answer of negative 2, because a negative divided by a positive is negative. And then you've still got to subtract off 3. Negative 2, subtract off 3. That means you're at negative 2, and you must take 3 steps further down. You'll end up at negative 5.